Okay, so uh, this is a piece of work with my colleague, Birgitta Raba, also at the University of Essex. Uh, we're both from an economics background, but we attend the food and nutrition subgroup of the ARC East of England. And this is work that's been funded by the Nuffield Foundation on the impacts of universal free school meal schemes on children's body weight outcomes. So we all know that child overweight and obesity is a serious and growing worldwide public health problem. Uh, so um, there's also a lot of evidence uh, showing that children consume uh, between uh, a quarter and a half of their overall food energy each day at school. And this means that school meal provision is an obvious policy lever by which we could help improve rates of healthy weight amongst children. Currently in England, we have uh, for children in reception year one and year two, already a universal infant free school meal program. So those children uh, are all entitled to a free school lunch every day in term time. This is funded by the Department for Education. They actually proposed it to be cut for the 2020 spending review, but the pandemic intervened and this cut was never implemented. Um, but between that signal and other parties' manifesto policies and um, you know, the move to universalism in Scotland and Wales means that uh, removing the scheme or retaining it or extending it to more year groups all seem possible, as does the possibility that means-tested free school meals would be extended to children in higher income groups within the next electoral cycle. Uh, so for older children, um, free school meals are only available to children of parents who receive universal credit and have a sufficiently low household income. Uh, rumours that this might be going to change today, but we'll see. Um, children who aren't eligible for a free school meal can either purchase the same meal from the school canteen uh, or need to bring a packed lunch. Since 2008, there have been school food standards which are supposed to ensure high nutritional standards for these school meals and limits on calories and portion sizes when averaged over the whole week. But the budget for both means tested and universal free school meals hasn't been increasing in line with inflation, so it's likely that the quality of these is being squeezed. Nevertheless, from audit studies looking at the contents of children's packed lunches compared with school meals, uh, it does seem likely that in almost all cases what children are provided at school is more nutritious and more appropriate than what they would be bringing in their packed lunches. So Birgitta and I have done some work already on the impacts of the National Universal Infant Free School Meal Scheme on children's body weights. And we found that over the course of the reception year, uh, children receiving um, universal meals, uh, their body weights became healthier. So there's about one percentage point less likely to be obese by the end of the year. Uh, but by the time those children had grown up to be in year six and be measured again in this data, the pandemic has happened. So uh, we weren't able to say anything about the longer term impacts of the universal infant scheme uh, on older children or the persistence of, these, uh, of this effect. So in this new project, we're trying to fill that gap in evidence by looking at local authorities that have introduced universal free school meals to the whole of primary school off their own back. So these are the four local authorities we're looking at, all of them in London, introduced the scheme to different year groups at different times. Um, and it creates this nice feature that for year six children, at least, we observe some children, um, when they're measured in year six, who have just been receiving universal meals for one year, and some who've been receiving it all the way through primary school. And we might expect there to be different effects uh, depending on duration. Our data comes from the National Child Measurement Program. So this involves nurses going into schools once a year uh, to measure reception and year six children. Uh, our data set, due to 
potential displosivity concerns is only at the school level. Um, so we get a summary of the proportion of children obese and overweight and the mean Z score of the BMI. And we've got a small number of control variables to do with the demographics of the children and the deprivation in the school, plus the time of year that they were measured, which is something that usually gets ignored in public health uh, statistics based on this data set. And to put it in perspective, all these thresholds were defined with respect to the 1990 UK population growth tables, at which point, by definition, the top 5% BMI for children of any given age and sex, that was drawn as the threshold above which you'd be obese. And the next 10% would be classified as overweight. So even looking at the whole of England between 2007 and 2009, in reception, double the proportion for a healthy population were already obese at that point. And in general, things were worse in our treated local authorities, which are more deprived, but also worse for year six children than reception children. So to try and uncover uh, the causal effect of providing universal, infant, uh, universal free school meals on children's body weights, we use a method based on the difference in difference approach. Essentially here, we use um, the change in body weights in local authorities that never provided universal free school meals as a guide to what would have happened in the local authorities that did uh, had they never done so. And we call this the parallel trends assumption. Again, because of displosivity concerns in the data, um, we don't have local authority identifiers. So our control group is the whole of England, but we reweight these schools uh, to have the same profile of observable characteristics as our treated schools. Just looking at the raw data, it's not obvious that the gaps have widened or narrowed over this time, but this doesn't account for changes in the timing of measurement or in demographic characteristics. So when we run our full model, um, which does account for that, uh, this pair of bars in the middle shows our main result, which is that universal free school meals has made children's body weights healthier. So the scale of this shows that both in reception and in year six, um, children are in those local authorities are 1.3 percentage points less likely to be obese than they would have been had they never introduced that policy. We break it down by how long the year six children had been receiving the free school meals. Um, no very small effect on children who'd been receiving it for the first time, much smaller than the effect on reception children. So year six children's body weights are harder to shift in a short period of time. And while the results are imprecise because we don't have so many data points uh, for each year, broadly there's a cumulative effect so that the children who received it all the way through primary school uh, benefit most. Two more cuts of the data to talk about. One, we cut the data into schools with the highest quintile of registration for means-tested free school meals versus the others. We find quite similar effects in these poorest and less poor schools. Uh, this is encouraging um, that the benefits are largest to the newly eligible poor children in those schools or alternatively, that the policy is still benefiting the children who are already eligible in those, in those situations. So we're talking about proportionate universalism, this model of providing things universally in an environment when there's high means-tested eligibility already does seem to work. The less reassuring cut of the data is when we split by pre-existing levels of obesity the effects were much smaller in the schools where obesity was already more entrenched. And we suggest that for reasons of, um, you know, the overall food environment, difficulty to exercise and such like, these schools are gonna need 
um, more support to try and shift their entrenched obesity problems. And this just summarizes what I've already said. Essentially, you, universal free school meals do help reduce children's obesity prevalence. They're not going to be a, a silver bullet, but we're doing a wider project showing that this is a cost-effective way of improving children's health. Thank you.